Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So paid traffic is a great way to generate new leads, get more brand awareness for your business. And in some cases also win new customers for your company. However, the con with one single con with or limitation with paid advertising is that the moment you stop to fund these sophisticated advertising machines that Facebook and Google have created with new money, your brand does not appear in uh, front of your prospects anymore. In other words, the more money you put in into paid advertising, you actually keep getting your returns. Actually, it's a good thing too, if you think of it. In the short term, if you're able to make sense of the, uh, of, the, of the investment you're making into advertising and the returns you're getting, if that is adding up for your, uh, for your calculations in business, then I would by all means suggest that you continue to pump new money into advertising. Okay. However, the organic methods, if you have an organic strategy in place to generate traffic, uh, then nothing like it because organic strategy strategies that have been implemented keep on getting you traffic not just today but tomorrow and probably even for years together and one of the primary reasons for that is that the content that you're putting in on your digital platforms is going to stay there forever and that is why organic strategies keep on working year after year after year well, all strategies are not made alike. So some of those strategies might give you a trickle of traffic. However, the other strategies, for example, if you have invested in search engine optimization and your uh, blog is ranking on the top of the page, then you're going to get troves of traffic or a lot of traffic to your website or, um, or to the other digital platforms. So hi, welcome. This is Tejas and uh, I am a digital marketing consultant. I run my digital marketing agency by the name Innovators Digital. And Innovators Digital, we work with customers who would want to get more brand awareness for their business or even generate leads. In fact, if you have an e-commerce store, I have my toolkit of strategies which can help you get many, many new customers and sell more on your store. A few days ago on my group, Digital Marketing Strategies That, uh, that Work, I asked my followers, I asked the members of my group um, as to uh, uh, one question and let me show you that question. So I asked them if they had to join one or more of these courses, which one would they join? It had a few options, but the top one or the top grosser or the top answer was that a lot of my members wanted to know techniques to generate new leads organically. All right, guys, one word of caution here. Even if organic search traffic uh, and the methods that I'm going to share uh, do seem to be uh, amazing in terms of new knowledge, however, unless and until uh, you take action for your business, these organic methods are not going to really end up showing the result you're expecting it to for your business. I should also mention that organic search traffic is basically your organic implementing organic methods is uh, is more of a medium term to a long term approach, which means that probably even if you implement those strategies today, you're not going to start seeing the results tomorrow. However, if you keep at it over 30, 60, 90 days, then for sure, you're going to keep on seeing some uh, result of your efforts. So without further ado, I made a short presentation here or a short five slide deck, uh, which will help you understand. I also, so the, so the first step here is, in the five step process is find your micro niche. Digital marketing has evolved by leaps and bounds over the past decade. And if you look at the kind of competition, which is there in terms of the publishers who are, who are creating new content or content creators who are pushing amazing new content every single day on different channels, then you'll figure out that probably for, for the topic or for the, for the industry that you operate in, you will find 50 different content creators. So when there is so much competition, how does um, any social platform like Google, Instagram, uh, or even Amazon or wherever, or whichever other platform decide which of the, which of the content should rank? All right. So it is important for you as a content creator now that you find your micro niche. A micro niche is basically a more detailed version of the topic you typically try to answer questions on for your customers. And here's an example. For example, the micro niche pyramid is an inverted pyramid. Okay. At the bottom, the, uh, at the bottom uh, of that pyramid, let us say that we are considering it's health insurance. As we keep on going down, 
we see health insurance UK. This is a UK specific example. If you keep going down, then probably there is a private health insurance UK. And, and, and at the top of the pyramid, top of the inverted pyramid, it is the private health insurance UK for over the 60s. You must have seen a trend that to the bottom of this pyramid, which is the yellow section here, it, it, is, it is catering to uh, an ultra niche segment of uh, private insurance for anybody who is over 60 years of age. Whereas if you compare what we are dealing with in this purple, we are, uh, purple block here, we are seeing that it is only about health insurance. In other words, it means that the number of competitors is going to be way higher in the purple box than in the yellow box. You can take another example for finding your micro niche. Let us say you are a yoga trainer and um, you are a yoga trainer and you just decide to rank for yoga. And you will find that for yoga, when you search, you have these many results here. I, I can't even count these zeros. However, let us go a little deeper and let's say yoga for kids. Okay. And if I say yoga for kids, then the number of searches drop down considerably. Now, if I say that I want to go in for, I want to go in for yoga um, postures for women um, post pregnancy, for example, and then let me see the number of results. Number of results has dropped down even further. So, so, so the so the point I'm trying to make here is that the more deeper you go into your niche then you will find that there is lesser competition. And if there is lesser competition, then the chances of you being discovered are higher. Not only that, you will keep on getting quality traffic to your web pages. So point number one was find your micro niche. For example, another example, let, let me show you another example. Let us say if you're a real estate agent, a real estate agent, you will have a lot of competition. However, if you go in for real estate agent for then you're going to find uh, find uh, multiple options here. Like for example, real estate agents for NRI for NRI can also become one of the uh, one of the crazy options here. See, look at the number of re number of search results. It's way 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 low. It's just 58 lakh search results that Google was able to pull out from the entire internet. So so guys, the the riches are in the niches. If the deeper you are able to uh, go into your topic of interest and serve a select set of target market, the better you're going to get known and therefore you will also win many new customers. The second point or the second step in uh, getting a steady stream of organic traffic is to research content ideas. And I'm going to show you three um, quick ways of researching content ideas. Now, let us say that our topic is yoga. And if I type in uh, my topic for yoga and I scroll down on Google, uh, Google is going to rank the rank of your videos first. It's going to talk about wake up yoga, for example, 11 minute practice, 10 minute, 10 minute morning uh, yoga, full body stretch. And here I also see that 30 days of yoga with Adrienne. Okay. So here itself, I'm going to get a few ideas for my content. So possibly the, so possibly here are my content, uh, content ideas. I can say that, okay. 10 minute, uh, 10 minute yoga, full body stretch. And I can say that I want to create a video which basically goes through a 10 minute yoga and shows my version of, uh, or the postures that people should perform. As you scroll down, you will see that people will also ask and they are going to ask these questions here. So why is yoga good for you? And um, I will, I will I'll, I'll, I'll let go of the other questions here because it's true meaning of yoga, probably true meaning of yoga. I'll include here. What is the true meaning of yoga? And these questions, guys, which are which I'm putting down in my notepad here, I'm going to answer them either um, in, in my posts, in my blog or even um, uh, on the video itself. If I go down, I'm going to see some more content ideas. So for example, it shows me 38 health benefits of yoga. Let me say that I'm going to give you five health benefits of yoga. Uh, no need of uh, 38 benefits of yoga. If I go down, then I'm also going to see that, okay, there are some more related searches which are there. But, but for now, let me do is that, okay, why is yoga good for you? If I click on it, then it is also going to give me 
uh, give me the answers here. Now, let us say that I'm going to dive deeper into my niche, niche, and I'm going to say that yoga for back pain. Okay, I'm going to say yoga for back pain and see what comes up in the in the section here. Okay, so look at this. Now I'm I'm seeing a long tail search, which means that I have uh, it is more deeper as a search where it says yoga asanas for back pain with pictures. So probably somebody, uh, there is a group of people who is searching on Google for uh, for pictures of yoga asanas, which can be used for back pain so that they can probably uh, practice those postures and elevate their pain itself. If I click on this, then I'm going to get a list of all postures itself. So probably if I have my content idea, which is yoga for back pain, okay, then Google probably has given me uh, a list of postures which can also be performed um, and maybe in my 10 minute yoga where I'm doing a full body stretch, I can even decide to focus on back pain in particular, okay, on back pain in particular and in those 10 minutes perhaps I decide to show these postures. I do understand how complex yoga can be and probably in 10 minutes you are not able to, you will not be able to show many of these postures, but you could at least probably cover a few of these postures and you have a head start into your content strategy. Similarly, if I want to uh, know more about why is yoga good for you and see if there are any other more questions that people are asking, I could click on that. And similarly, uh, I get benefits of yoga and meditation and uh, uh, and, and you know, here, here's another great question, which I find, which is, should you meditate before or after yoga? Okay. So should you meditate before and after before or after yoga? So this is how I can find content ideas using Google. Now let us say the second way of uh, finding content ideas is going to Instagram and on Instagram, uh, people will search content largely for using hashtags. Okay. So when you go to your search bar here and click on yoga, you will find a list of hashtags which are populated. So the trick here is that you go to yoga, which is a more generic uh, hashtag and it has many posts related to that yoga and try to find these top, uh, uh, try to and, and look into these uh, top posts here. Okay. So these top posts here before the most recent ones are the ones which have got maximum traction. So let me see that. Okay. This one has got 665 hearts, 593, 198, 392, 778. Okay. 2,903. Now let me just look into this uh, particular picture because it has, it has obviously got so many, so many hearts, which means that the number of comments will also be high. So if I look at the comments here, I'm going to try and find the content idea um, and, uh, and see if there is something which, which I can find out. And I, and I see that, okay, I don't see a content idea in the comments, but let me look here, lower your barriers. Okay. So this is just a motivational post. So let me look at this, this post here and, and try to search for a content idea. Uh, and I don't see a content idea e here either. Okay. So, so let me see here. Do I have something? No, this, this does not have a lot of engagement. So to say, Okay, what about this post here? And uh, and I don't see it. Okay, let me let me take a better example. Let us say I'm going to take a uh, let's move to the food niche. To be honest, uh, to for a change, sorry. And and let me go. Let me say that you know we are we are catering to a segment of fish lovers or seafood lovers, and try to see what's happening there. So if I click on fish. Okay. And let us say, uh, I'm wanted to eat a pomfret fry today. I'm going to see the, see what's coming up here. And there you go. So I'm going to see multiple recipes about the pomfret fry. And if I, for, uh, for example, click on one of these posts, I may uncover certain, uh, certain questions here. So, so one way to do is, okay, so now one, one way to do this is that some people might have asked questions about a recipe. So you could decide on a post that, which is, which is going to cater to this recipe. Otherwise you could see what recipe these guys have made. Generally, sometimes they will even post the recipe in their section here, masala pomfret fry. 
So for example, if Masala Pomfret Fry post is getting like 150 likes, you could create a better version of this particular, uh, uh, particular fish recipe. Going back to the yoga, uh, yoga hashtag one more time. If you say that, okay, if, if you're looking at yoga poses to perform, okay, or, or let's say we, we try to search for yoga for back pain. Let me see if there's a hashtag here and I see 23,000 posts. I can go there and do my research in terms of the postures which are there and look at this. So incidentally, we were searching for, uh, searching for, a, uh, searching for yoga for back pain here and we had got an entire uh, entire list of postures. You're going to get another list of postures here and you're also going to get a program here. So this content is, is trending on Instagram. You could create, you could recreate the same content and probably shoot a video for YouTube, or you could also create your version for Instagram. So that's a second way to research. The third way to research is let us say on Amazon, Amazon is one of the biggest search engines. So let us say that, you know, uh, I'm, uh, I'm searching for yoga mats for, uh, for workout. Let me, let me go generic and not by gender. And I'm going to see a lot of, uh, products here. So, so generally go after the product, which has a lot of, uh, which has considerably higher number of traction. So here I'm seeing three, six, one, four ratings, and I'm going to go there and check what people like the most about this product. And, um, and it tells me that the yoga mat was about six mm variant and all of that. The length is good. Uh, it tells me that it's light in weight, easy to unroll, black in shape and blah, blah, blah. I could even go into a one star uh, rating and see what is, uh, what is not cool here. If the total number of ratings is less um, and you know, if I'm convinced about the product that I'm basically seeing here, then you could use the Amazon search to, uh, to also recommend products which are related, uh, which are related uh, to your topic, where to your to your followers. So for example, if you're doing a, uh, let us say that you're doing a, um, you're doing a video for a video of a posture sequence for yoga for back pain, and you are showing all these postures on camera, you could even add a plug which says that, okay, um, you know, I feel that you should go ahead and buy uh, a yoga mat, which comes from XYZ company. Another tip here is that there's something called as affiliate marketing. So affiliate marketing is basically when you are trying to sell, uh, you're, you're basically promoting products which have been made by somebody else. So for example, you could write, you, you could do a review of, a, of the latest Apple phone and, um, and pass an affiliate link of, uh, of that phone uh, to your users so that whenever the users buy through your link, you are liable to earn a small commission from, uh, from the referring party. In this case, similarly for Amazon, for example, if this, if this is a product that you want to promote, then you can generate your own affiliate link, which basically looks like a web URL. It will have your uh, ID embedded in it and you can give it, uh, you can share it in your blog post, in your video and so on and so forth. So you can stand a chance of earning a little more commission as well. So these are the three ways of researching. You go on Google, you find the long tail, you search on Instagram and you also search on Amazon. The third step in the process is basically creating content. Okay. And creating content, I'm going to give you three types of content, which definitely work well uh, when it comes to social media. Type number one is a listicle. So it is an informative content that educates. Basically you're giving nuggets of information to your followers, which they can quickly look at and pick the ones that are most relevant for them. I'm going to show you this listicle. So do not worry. The second thing is a customer success story. So customer success story is basically showcasing case study of your past customer wins with your followers. And the third thing is your personal journey. So for example, you, you can, you can show your uh, followers how you're progressing in the thing that you're doing. So, so let me go head over to my, um, Oops, this is my personal. Yeah, let me head over to my innovators digital Instagram account and I'll show you what a listicle is. So for example, five ways to generate free traffic. Here are five more ways. Uh, build an email list, get active forums, produce value on Facebook groups, start a YouTube channel or write a blog post. Now this is something which I call a listicle, okay? And a listicle is basically informative post which is going to educate the user so that the user can pick whatever is relevant for him. So for example, if I 
um, if building an email list interests me the most, then I'm going to pick this uh, and go ahead. So this is how you inform uh, and educate your people, uh, your followers. The other thing is showcasing customer success stories. So, so for example, um, here is, here is uh, how, you can, how you can do it. Here is a case study which I made for, for the past work that I had done with a fashion and a lifestyle brand. And I basically wanted to showcase that uh, every dollar or every rupee which was invested had generated 84 rupees in return for one of these campaigns which I ran for this fashion and lifestyle brand. So you could create a case study which is, uh, which is similar. And you could also give a call to action on your social platforms saying that, hey, if, if you want me to work with your brand, uh, you can also reach out to me on this email address. The third thing is showcasing your own journey. So for example, if you see these photos here, this is behind the scene of, uh, of, of one of my employees. Here is, uh, in scene, uh, here is another photograph from one of the workshops which I conducted. Here is one photo from, uh, from the workshop where we were answering questions. Uh, here is from here is a photo from the time when I met uh, I met an influencer. Here is an in-class photo and an after-class photo, so on and so forth. You could also generate your journey. If there has been something which is very inspirational about your uh, journey in your topic, you could also share the same with your followers. Another pro tip here is that whenever you create these content ideas, it actually makes a lot of sense to create a plan for about 30 days so that once you've created the, the content plan and worked with your designers to build those designer sets and captions as well, you don't need to worry about uh, uh, running out of content. Okay. So, so once you have 30 posts ready for, for example, 30 days or whatever your frequency is probably 15 posts in a month, then all you need to do is you need to take that content and post it on your social media channels. And that brings us to the next point that selecting the right channel mix. Okay. Now there are so many social, uh, social media channels, which are out there, uh, that it can get super confusing to basically even understand where to start. So I picked up this list of channels, which you're seeing on the screen and I'm going to go through them very quickly. First is Facebook and Instagram. Second is LinkedIn blogs, videos, or the newest kid on the block. So to say, which is the podcast. Okay. So Facebook and Instagram. Now, if you are a B2C brand, where basically you're offering and selling your products or services directly to your customer. Uh, maybe if you have an e-commerce store or maybe you're selling via, via Facebook and Instagram directly, then obviously you should go in for Facebook and Instagram. If you're a food startup, for example, go for Instagram. If you're selling clothes online, go for Instagram. If you're a drop shipper who is, uh, who is selling some, um, not exactly drop shipping. Uh, yeah. Okay. Drop shipping. You're selling shoes, for example, go in for Facebook and Instagram. The second thing is LinkedIn. Okay. Now LinkedIn is the largest professional network of all professionals across the world. So it means that if you're, if in your business, it is important to connect to the decision makers or influencers or key people, uh, sitting in the corporate offices, then LinkedIn is where you need to focus all your efforts on. While this is a no brainer, what I'm also trying to say is that if you choose LinkedIn as your social media channel, then don't worry about creating a large presence on Facebook and Instagram. Don't uh, waste your effort on any other social media channel. First select one particular channel or two particular channels uh, and go big on those channels and, and, and decide how it's performing for you and then make those change, uh, changes. Okay. So LinkedIn is for B2B. For example, if you're a corporate training startup, who uh, wants to connect with HR managers, go to LinkedIn. If you are, um, uh, you know, if, if you're searching for B2B kind of companies for your business, go to LinkedIn. Um, uh, what, what else? So, so, so that is the, that is when you select LinkedIn. Okay. So it is largely for, uh, for connecting with key decision makers sitting in companies, blogs by the virtue of blogs or articles, uh, or posts, uh, that you that you write, you're going to get a chance to create authority or showcase authority on your topic. So I would say that you can just go ahead and, um, and create a blog section on your website. Um, or what you could do is you could head over to one of, uh, you, uh, one of the, uh, one of the platforms like medium, uh, com or even LinkedIn has provided with, uh, provided you with a section called as articles where you could also pen in pen your thoughts and, um, uh, and that could also serve uh, as a start point. But in the long term, you should always have your blog because a blog is something which is 
which is owned by you. That real estate is owned by you. Whereas a medium post is owned by medium, a LinkedIn article is owned by LinkedIn. So um, God forbid, if anything happens to these social media channels, then you don't want to be excessively dependent on uh, one particular platform. The next is videos. Okay. Videos is uh, guys truly uh, something which is, which is, which is, which is big currently. Okay. So if you're comfortable in front of the camera and if you're comfortable in terms of speaking with your audience, then by all means, go ahead and create a video. Um, one rule of thumb is, or, or two pro tips is that, you know, whenever you're creating a video, make sure that you uh, that it is at least three minutes long. And the second thing is that, uh, create your videos for YouTube, uh, post it on YouTube, and then you can share those links anywhere else on, a, so on your social media networks. However, one tip here is that LinkedIn do not try to share, uh, uh, share, uh, uh, share a YouTube video link on LinkedIn because with LinkedIn algorithm, it is shaped in such a way that they do not like you to take the traffic out of their ecosystem into some uh, other social network. The new kid in the block is called a podcast. Now the difference between a video and a podcast is that with video, you have to be glued to your screen and probably you even have to see and hear, okay, see and listen. With a podcast, the benefit is that is that is a single sensory input kind of a channel where you can keep on listening to whatever information is being thrown at you and at the same time, you can continue to do whatever you're doing at work or in your personal life. Um, Google in 2019, had clearly mentioned in one of their events that they're going to start indexing the podcast as well. So what, what I, what I wanted to uh, say here is that in the years to come, podcast is definitely going to become really, really big. And you will, uh, you will start to see uh, uh, not only podcasts being ranked uh, on Google, but it will also uh, start to be listened more than, pro than probably something like a blog. Okay. Um, and it also makes sense because with, with, you know, with an increased penetration of, uh, of devices like, uh, Alexa or Siri or Google voice, um, these big companies are already listening to your voice and trying to make a lot of sense out of that data. Uh, and so the next logical step is going to be that they are going to index all this data on a search engine and, and present it to the people. Last but not the least. Uh, as I said at the beginning of this uh, video, uh, you know, guys, this information might have been really cool or probably you already knew a few things out of this, but unless and until you're taking action um, of the things that you have really liked in this video, it's not really going to make a lot of sense. Okay. So I would say that post regularly for about 90 days. You don't need to make 90 posts. You can even post 30 times for 90 days and maintain that frequency regularly. And at the end of 90 days, I would want you to measure which of these posts got most likes metric one, which of the posts were shared the most, which of the posts invited most comments. Okay. And these are the types of the posts, uh, your, uh, your audience is basically liking a lot. Okay. So if you're starting out on your journey, on your 90 day journey, I would definitely recommend that, you know, experiment a lot and, um, uh, ex experiment a lot. And only then you will really understand uh, which of the content pieces are doing well. Don't be afraid to actually fail and try uh, and post content, which is not really up to the mark. Don't wait for perfection. Uh, uh, keep on iterating and then you will know what kind of content really does well for your business. Uh, needless to say, uh, if you, if you do all of this, right, because social media is a, is a, is a social platform, you will keep on generating leads for your business for free. All right, guys, that's all I had to say today. Uh, if you liked the content that I actually shared with you on this video, do like comment or uh, share this ahead with your friends and please do not forget to even subscribe to my channel. All right. Thank you guys.